please hit subscribe. Hi, I understand some of you might be taking the exams really soon, so good luck. And if you're thinking of doing some last minute revision, I think it would be a good idea to go over some of the topics that I cover here for the physics undergraduate exam. A quick survey of the past papers reveals that the physics questionnaire actually covers a very wide range of topics. And here I summarize what I think are the most prominent topics you will see on the questionnaires. So those fall under general mechanics, electricity, optics and waves, simple harmonic motion, and thermodynamics. For the general mechanics questions, there are many questions involving the ideas of position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, and so it's important that we remember their relationship with, with each other. For example, the definition of velocity is, such, is that it's the time derivative, first time derivative of, of position or displacement. And likewise, for the acceleration, that's the second time derivative of displacement or the first derivative of velocity. And because of this relationship, we know how to get the position or displacement if we are given, for example, the velocities. And then we also see in the questionnaires that the free body diagram is used extensively, especially in the application of Newton's laws. So we might want to master this. And also here I just wrote a special case for the spring. We call it the Hooke's law where we have k, the spring constant. And then the idea of energy is very useful in the problems. Here is the the formula for kinetic energy. It's just one half mass times the square of the speed. Then gravitational potential energy. Then here we also wrote the spring potential energy, which is from Hooke's law. And then here I wrote the conservation of energy. So for any process, the time, or rather for any process, the energy, the sum of the energies before that process and after that process must not change. So that's that's also the first law of thermodynamics. So that's there. And a similar conservation law applies for momentum. That's what we wrote here. The sum of the momentums before something is the same as the sum of the momentums of the objects after that something. And momentum is defined as the mass times the speed or velocity. And these are important concepts, especially when we're dealing with collisions. So collisions are solvable. Most, most of them will be asking for speeds and they are solvable if we use the conservation of, of energy and momentum. And sometimes they will give you the condition that the collision is elastic. That means that the kinetic energies are conserved. So forget about the potential energy. Think about the kinetic energies. So we just want to add the kinetic energies before the collision, and they must be equal to the sum of the kinetic energies after the collision. And there's also the concept of the coefficient of restitution, which is related to relative speed. Basically, after a collision, there is a computable relative speed. And we want to get the ratio of that to the relative speed before the collision. And that's the coefficient of restitution. The electricity questions in the physics questionnaire can sometimes be challenging, especially when they involve integrals and derivatives. So it is quite helpful if we master the basics, like Coulomb's law for the force between two charges, the electric fields, how the electric field is related to the force and the charge at that point, and the superposition of electric fields. It says that the total electric field at a point is just the sum of the electric fields due to each of the charges. And a similar relationship holds for electric potential. The total electric potential at a point is just the sum 
of the electric potentials due to the separate charges. And if you have the electric potential and a charge at a given point, you can actually compute the potential energy of that charge. And, and then there are also circuits questions normally involving resistors, resistance, capacitors, capacitance, inductors, coils, and inductance. So the relationships among these quantities might be, might be useful to remember. And also there are questions about electromagnetic induction. So it might be good to remember the right-hand rule, which gives you the direction of the current, the relationship among the directions of the current, the magnetic field, and the magnetic force. And of course, it might be nice if we if we study the the relationships among the forces when an electromagnetic field is induced. And also, there they will sometimes involve questions about the magnetic fields. So the electricity portion of the exam might be challenging, but if we if we pin down the basics. Maybe we can get some points from that. There are also questions about optics and waves. So normally it would be ray optics, but some of the wave concepts are also mixed in. So for the wave portion, it might be useful to revise the ideas of wavelength frequency, angular frequency, amplitude, and phase. And this is common to all kinds of waves, but they usually ask this in the context of of optics questions or like the wavelength of light or maybe just a general wave they might they might give just a, a picture of a wave and and they will ask you things about it and also re related to the waves and and optics in general are the ideas of reflection and refraction so how does the wave reflect if it's a fixed end or if it's a free end and how do we apply snell's law during refraction of a light wave and things like that. Also, the index of refraction might come in handy and in total internal reflection. And also, there are a lot of, of questions about interference, destructive and constructive, about slit experiments. So based on the interference pattern, you will get a fringe pattern. And that's going to be useful in answering questions related to slit experiments. And when they ask questions about springs, normally it's got something to do with the simple harmonic motion. And so it might be good to familiarize ourselves with the, with the governing equation. So this is the governing equation of the, simple, of the simple harmonic motion and the solution to this equation. So here we have X as the displacement from the equilibrium position. So this is the solution. And you can find the acceleration to be this given the solution. And so it is helpful to understand the meaning of the words equilibrium position. So that's when the spring is neither compressed nor stretched. And then the ideas of maximum stretching of the spring and the maximum compression. And normally those, those values would be the value of A here in your, in your, in your equation here. And also, Often you might be asked about the angular frequency of the spring when it starts doing simple harmonic motion. So that's just the square root of the ratio, the spring constant to the mass. And lastly, there are many questions about thermodynamics. And for thermodynamics questions, the ideal gas law is very convenient to, to learn. That's just PV equals nRT here. P is the volume, or rather pressure. V is the volume and the number of moles of ideal gas. R, the universal gas constant, and T, the temperature, absolute temperature in Kelvin. And this is, this is useful in, in solving questions involving ideal gas when they expand, when they contract, and things like that. And sometimes they will be coupled with a few questions about the first law. So the first law of thermodynamics states that the change in internal energy is just the heat going into the system minus the work coming out of the system. So the concept of work, heat, and internal energy might be useful to understand. And usually they also give you some PV diagrams that, PV diagrams that actually 
tell about the processes and cycles and we have to remember for example how to compute the work if you are given a PV diagram we need to understand the meaning of the words isochoric meaning the volume is constant isobaric the pressure is kept constant isothermal the temperature is kept constant and adiabatic that is the the amount of energy is is kept constant and the idea of pv diagram actually comes in handy when you're compute when you're when you're talking about the processes and the cycle so we remember that the cycle is just a set of processes that start and end at the same point in the pv diagram and from those diagrams we can compute thermal efficiencies and similar quantities so that's for the physics exams i hope that will help your revision process and good luck on the exams if you learned something new today please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications see ya